Hi, I'm Greg Sachs, and this is Three Questions. Uh, I work for Riso, and I am here with Marilyn Wilson from the Wave Group. Thank you for doing this, Marilyn. Absolutely. Question one, and I'll dive right in. I now see your face and some other familiar faces from Wave Group and CRMLS on the Greater Southern MLS website. Can you explain that initiative, why CRMLS is involved, and why the Louisiana MLS space has become such a hotbed for activity? Interesting. Good question. <laughs> yeah, I can absolutely explain it. Um, there are about 70-ish brokers in Louisiana that felt like they were not getting the support and guidance and input and responsiveness that they needed to get from their MLSs. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to team up together and create their own. So it's a broker-run initiative. broker-run initiative, a broker -run initiative um, with uh, ownership and participation from two of the associations in the state, from the North Shore Area Board of Realtors and the Southwest Louisiana Association of Realtors. So they sell the product. So much like many regionals, so we wholesale it to them. And then it gets marked up and gets resold through the association. So they still get a margin like they would when they sell MLSs on their own. Sure. Um, and it's been super fun because with with broker mindset at the table all the time and very actively engaged top producers and agents um, and having the support of CRMLS, which we'll talk about in a minute, we're able to do things that really satisfy in almost real time in many cases, things that agents need to be successful. So mm -hmm. the whole role, in fact, the, the tagline is the MLS focused on your success. Mm -hmm. So it's all about doing what an agent and a broker needs to do whatever they need to do to be successful. So. Creator Southern's and the enabler, if you will, right? Gotcha. It's there to, to do what it what they need us to do to 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 be great for them to be great. That's Hopefully, pretty. we're great to be to help for them to be great. But the CRMLS connection is very interesting. Yeah. Because many times when people think of the MLS expansion, they think of you know I'm here and you're here, and so we're next door, so that makes sense, yeah. right? The truth is, like we all know, everything's in the cloud. Nobody's actually serving up data or technology right there on, pro on premise, right? Uh, so we talked to many different um, MLSs around. We talked directly to vendors. We looked at a variety of approaches. Sierra MLS came back with a phenomenal program um, and have completely private labeled it or white labeled it, depending on your what you, mm -hmm. words you like. So if a an agent picks up the phone, it says Greater Southern MLS. If an agent goes to the chat and at 11 o'clock at night and needs an answer on something, Greater Southern, so everything is completely seamless to them. Mm -hmm. And what's awesome is that, uh, I'll brag about Sierra MLS, I mean, they have, you know, 40, 50 developers in, in, right. in house. They've I got, assumed. you know, obviously top of the list priority with CarLogic because they're the yeah. largest MLS in the country. Um, so an agent will come to us. We had a, a top producing agent that looked at something in the way that the, uh, the search was going and she said, I don't really like this. Could it do this? And literally in 12 hours it was fixed. Wow. She was blown away. Yeah. And it was probably the fifth or sixth thing she'd asked us for. And we just kept ticking away and ticking. And she's like, wow, this is, wow. That's what you want. <laughs> I mean, you know, an agent is never going to be like, oh, my MLS is amazing. Right. But they're starting to feel good that they've got somebody that's listening and responding. So okay. it's, so it's awesome. They're providing that technical backbone to allow you to be responsive to your your client, essentially. And, and they're super responsive to us. I mean, they we ask them to do all kinds of crazy things because, as we know, the market's very dynamic and mm -hmm. things change. And Mark Gasset, Marty Reed, Adris, mm -hmm. all of them, they step up. And then we also have, which is phenomenal, it's not just the leadership team. Yeah. So we have the full access to the compliance team, full access oh, wow. to um, the marketing team. You know. Customer support train. We have our own on, on, on the ground trainers that are CRMLS employees. So it's 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 literally outsourcing the entire operation yeah. to the largest and some might argue the best MLS in the country. So it's pretty neat. So we, uh, this isn't really an official question. It's kind of a light follow up. Is this the first time CRMLS has done this outside of the state? I believe it is. Yes. So now they have might... they have lots of creative. Uh, of course, they have many of their own direct customers. Sure. But they have many data shares around the, you know, they, they're doing a lot of interesting different models yeah. because at the end of the day, technology is not the limiter. It's our creativity and it's our ability to try to find better ways to collaborate and save on cost and time and energy. And like, if you can build it for 200,000 people, why would you, why would you build it for 200? Yeah, that's a great so, point. It's amazing. So we love it. It's, okay. it's working great. A lot of work, but it's, a, it's an awesome project. So we don't have to get into why Louisiana is 
the hotbed of activity. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. Just know that if you're watching this. Louisiana, we're watching you. There's a lot happening in your state. <laughs> it's very interesting to us in the industry. Uh, question two. Okay. Uh, there's plenty of change in the real estate industry, often on a weekly, if not daily basis. But since I can't get into all of it in three questions, what is one predominant trend that you are watching with interest? Oh, that's a hard one. I would say um, from the MLS side of the house, um, and of course our latest announcement of Remont, not our industry's <laughs> announcement of sure. the Remind acquisition is a great example. What what I love to see happening, and it started with Upstream and Broker Portal mm -hmm. and MLS Grid and MLS Aligned, yeah. and, and we're seeing more and more collaborations coming together, right? And people trying stuff. Yeah. Like, will they all work? I'm sure they won't. Like, it's right. business, right? Everything won't work. But when people are saying, let's lay down our egos, let's lay down our local, we're better than you stuff, mm -hmm. and getting together and figuring out a way to, to try to do things that really matter, and that are gonna really help your, your members to do things the better way, that's awesome. Now, are, is it without pitfalls? No, it's absolutely not. So, you know, we all have to know what we're good at, right? So MLSs are amazing at delivering services. They're not necessarily technology companies, right? Some are, yeah. but most aren't. Um, so in the Remind example, it's like get a tech, a professional technology expert, you know, that's run tech companies and understands the pace of change that you need to drive and yeah. things like that and sort of step back and let them do what they do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Broker Portal is a great example, right? They said, we're not going to build that. Let's bring in HomeSnap. Yeah. They're going to deliver it because they're a technology company and they have resources and capital and things that mm -hmm. MLSs may not have individually. So to me, that's probably more collaboration. one of the most exciting is like, think about ways and clearly remember MLSs are here to enable business. They are not the end game, right? They're the facilitators, right. just like resources are facilitators of standards. They're the facilitators of business opportunity. And as long as we remember that, that at the end of the day, we are not the customer, it's them, it's the broker, it's the agent, and it's ultimately the consumer, and we're focused on their needs, Yeah, I think we're all gonna be better off. That's an excellent question, or answer. Um, wow, okay, now it's my turn to talk a lot, because this third question <laughs> is a doozy. Okay. Your daughter Sparkles Lund oh, <laughs> has been an exceptional self-marketer in her young life. It's almost like she had a couple of parents who knew a thing or two about marketing. That said, she seems to have a natural knack for personal promotion. In my experience with my own kids, there appears to be a hard split from those that take part in social media and those that do not at all. Uh, yet they all interact intuitively with technology in ways that uh, older generations uh, simply do not. I'm a technologist, I do interact, but people my age yeah, I, don't, don't always Don't sell it. yourself short, Greg. Right? You know what you're doing. <laughs> do you think we'll see gradual or hard changes in the way marketing and PR work uh, and companies as, as these younger generations become dominant in the workplace? Oh, wow, that is a long question. Um, I think we're already seeing it. I mean, she sent me a link the other day of a really cool property promotion on TikTok. On TikTok? On TikTok. Uh -huh. I was like, wow, and she's, you gotta look at this mom. I'm like, uh oh, we're sucking her into the marketing, <laughs> real estate, vortex. This is great. She can be working with us someday. Yeah, I mean, like, um, TikTok is something definitely people over 30 don't get. No, but she was. She thought that was the coolest thing ever. That real estate. Somebody in real estate found it, right? So yeah. TikTok is the latest thing. What's coming next week? Right. Who knows? So do you think this will be hard for mm -hmm. generations to keep up with, or are we going to be malleable enough? No, I don't think so. I don't. Well, maybe for us, but maybe not. I think COVID did one really interesting thing. It it peeled back all of our facades. Yeah. When you're sitting in your bedroom, your your spare bedroom, and your dog walks in, and the mailman's at the door, right? right? All of the stuff of this, like, we're in our suits and we're all, like, polished. <laughs> it, we just don't, we can't do, like, right. I've seen you in your back bedroom with yeah. your dog, right? Yeah. It's just, you can't go there anymore. Right. So the thing I love about this generation is that they're not the first gen, right? They, sure. They're, like, second or third. Yeah. And what they're bringing to it is authenticity. And she will tell me, like, she'll look at a post and she's like, no, yeah, definitely it not. Fake. It looks fake, it looks manufactured, it looks like some random social media agency that doesn't know the brand told the story. And so they're learning, I mean, she's a double major in, in uh, advertising and business right now. There you go. And she's working with, like, the former CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi, like, big brand people. And sure. it's like, no, that old stuff, the me, me, me advertising, and yeah. I'm so great, you should follow me, it doesn't work. Right. You've got to engage, you've got to be authentic, 
you got to be dynamic. You've got to be in many different places because you never know where your customers, what customer's going to be. And so that's intuitive for them. Yeah. They just know how to do that. Uh, I think I we're catching up at some level, sure. but they're, they're great at it. I want to make sure it's, I, I, I'm not framing this as an us versus them. We're not trying to hold on to anything because no. uh, even at this meeting, I am seeing a lot of young companies. Mm -hmm. well, Riso has a partnership with Reach yep. uh, and Second Century Ventures to bring in new blood. Absolutely. And we absolutely want to engage that and, and, and all work together to learn how to advance in this new technology world. That we I need. think they're going to help us. But I also think like in any good partnership, you have to have some domain experience in history sure. too, right? It's not like, well, we didn't, we don't do it that way. Like yeah. not that no, stuff, but, mentorship. but there's patterns in any mm -hmm. kind of business dynamic. There's economic patterns. There's a lot of different patterns and things. We were laughing about it this week about, you know, the MLS of choice. So we've talked about that since 2001, yeah. right? And it comes in and it comes out. So to me, and, and I think this this group's very, they're very nice people. Like yeah. This generation's very nice. Yes. They're not all trying to be dominant and kill each no. other. They're really nice they, people. And they want to do business that makes sense and solves problems. And they're good listeners. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they can take what we've learned, ingest it, and then marry it with new thinking and, you know, contemporary ways of telling that story, I think they're world's the oyster for those guys i think i think it's awesome and it's just fun i don't i just love talking to a company that's they're excited and yeah. they found and you, and you hear it and you're like wow ai doing that like that is really cool yeah so it's exciting for I, all I, of us i totally agree that's why i used your kid as a as yeah. an example. yeah <laughs> so that's by it. the way her name is now alex Lund oh, on instagram a rebrand we're going away from sparkles now that we're almost 19, just so you know. So if you guys can't find sparkles, you gotta look for Alex. Alex, love. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, thank you for doing this, Marilyn. Absolutely. Take care. <laughs>